And hello and good morning. We are live on Bowls TV. 
Welcome wherever you are in the world. It's morning here on the East Coast, 9 a.m. Good evening, good afternoon, good day, wherever you may happen to be. As you can see, I do not have my headphones on, which I'll put on in just a moment, but I want you to see my delicious, lovely hair. It's grown out enough from the initial haircut we had seven weeks ago, and it's looking better. Not quite as bald, sort of that way, but not all the way. So I wanted you to see the loveliness. I put some mud in it to hold it into place because I have very fine hair, and if you don't hold it down, it goes wherever it decides it wants to go. So now we put on the ugly, and we turn up the headphones to see if we're actually live, and it appears we are live. Been an interesting week. We are playing some slow blues. Now, sometimes when we play these slow blue songs, they're a little bit loud. And they do interrupt our train of thought every once in a while. We'll see how this goes. We like more atmospheric music, but it's Friday. What are you going to do? As you can see, we are now branding with the Bowls TV right here. It's a little sticker that I put on a piece of hard cardboard and cut out with an X-Acto knife. And then... Oh, it's Dora here. We are live. Good morning. And we stuck it on the microphone with Visa Tape. And there's also a one here that's actually the sticker. And if you go a little higher, you can see the other sticker on the side and on the other side. So we're in decorating mood and branding mood and branding mode. As you can see, maybe, if I sit up, Oh, the Bulls TV shirts are in from the merch store. The merch store is available. I'll show it to you in a moment, but there's something else I'm going to show you first. Bullsblogs.org forward slash M-E-R-C-H. It's not Bulls Blog, it's Bulls Books. Too many. Bowls. Books.org. Okay, that works. Bullsbooks.org merch. M E R C H. I spelled merch wrong. It's a Friday. What can I say? We're having fun, but we're not paying attention. It's still wrong. Let's just type it all over again. Bowls. Bullsbooks.com forward slash. No, not dot com dot org dot org. The site is loading, and while that's loading, I'll show you what else is up. So I ordered the new shirt with the logo, and I'll talk about the logo in a minute. But I also ordered a lot of these different kinds of stickers that I plan to stick on things. This is the inline, one line, straight. Bulls TV logo. Comes in various sizes. Three inches, four inches. Maybe, is it five inches? Five and a half inches, I think. Okay, all kinds of different sizes. And they are, uh, uh, they are plastic. They, they are printed on paper. They're on a paper back, but when you peel it off, the stacked logo, oh my. It's Bulls.TV live. It all peels off, and you can stick it on things. Brand yourself. It's all good news. I don't know where we're going to put all this, but I'll figure it out. Use it for promotion. Try to get the word out. This is what we're doing now. Bulls.TV. So some people say, hey, you know, your logo, you know, look at the, out the outline. It, it, why wouldn't you fill in the outline so it's bolder so you can see it? Yeah. Oh, true. Fair criticism. And I purposefully picked this outline font for the logo. Why? Why would you do that? It's hard to read from afar. I like it because it's there and it's not there, remember? And because this kind of outline style is retro, 1970s, old like me. I like that too. 
but this has been updated to 2021. It's a brand new font. It was not cheap. It was $95 to buy the rights to use this font. And the colored in one, the one that has all the letters colored in, filled in, that was like $12. Didn't look exactly like this, but it was close enough. Most people probably wouldn't know the difference. But to me, this just said it. It seemed fresh. It seemed new. I could stick it on things. And that's what we're doing right now. We're finding things that we can logoize, brandize, as they may say. Now, speaking of branding and logos, it's a big thing in commercials and in businesses and people want to be remembered and sometimes they change their logos to something different. And we sort of changed who we are and what we're doing here because on Twitch we used to be Bulls Books and then we changed the username to Bulls TV. And now we are Bulls.TV is our URL for what we're doing here. And somebody the other day said, oh no, I type in Bowls TV and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't go anywhere. And I said, oh, really? Show me how you're typing it. And this is how they were typing it. Of course, they were typing in, well, you can't see the bar, but they were typing in typing in, they said, your your web address is Bowles TV. I said, yeah. And they were typing in B-O-L-E-S TV dot mm, com. Not Bowles dot TV. And they were typing that in. It was going nowhere. And they said, your website's down. It's not working. So it took me a, a couple of minutes to figure out what was going on. And then I realized, okay, People of a certain age who are old like me and maybe don't completely pay attention and don't type very well would, of course, naturally just type in Bowls TV, enter, which is what we've been trained to do when you're old and you've been around a while, and it just goes to the .com website by default in many browsers. So I thought, well, that's a problem. But it has an easy solution. So I went out and got BowlsTV.com. And forward it to our Twitch page. So people now type in bowlstv.com if they don't know any better. And Shazam, here you go. We're forwarding, we're loading. And it's all good in America. And there we are. And I have to close this or I'm going to start talking to myself again. Which I can't resist. Because it's so much fun. Loading. A mirror within 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 a mirror. It's all a mirror good in a mirror within a mirror. And there we are, and I have to close this or I'm going to start talking to myself again. Which I can't resist, because it's so much fun. Well, a mirror within 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 a mirror a mirror within a mirror. And there we are, and I have to close this or I'm going to start talking to myself again. Which I can't resist, because it's so much fun. A mirror within 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 a mirror. So there you go. You can go to bowls dot TV, which is the preferred domain name. Or if you're not paying attention, you can just go to Bowls TV, type that in, hit enter, and it'll go to BowlsTV.com and then go to our live Twitch stream. So here's the quick merch store I was telling you about where you can see our shirts, our new shirts. There are the, there are the stickers, and they're high-quality stickers. I was surprised. They're, they're plastic stickers, and they do seem a little sticky in a variety of sizes. There's the flatline Bowls TV logo shirt. Here's the stacked logo with the stacked logo shirt. So speaking of logos, Happy Cow is a wonderful website where they find you vegan, vegetarian places to go and eat. 
which I love. I think it's very important. It's an important service that they provide. And they have an app where you can go and look around, and it, that's why it's called Happy Cow, because the cow is not being slaughtered to be eaten. The cow is in the pasture being happy. And this is their logo, Happy Cow. It's a purple cow, a purple cartoon cow, with a purple cow lettering. All right, you read it, you know what it is, Happy Cow. It's a happy cow. Well, I guess happy cow, they're not happy with their logo, so they're running a contest where you can go and vote on the three finalists for the logo, the new logo. Oh, something from Doric, but it's in Twitter, so I can't really read. She says the music is too loud. Just tell me in chat, Dora, because it's easier for me to see it now. No, so I'll go in, I'll change the music. We'll find something softer. I'm kind of digging it, but if you can't hear me, you can't hear me. We'll see what ambient elegance is like if we prefer this. And Dora, just come back and tell me in chat if, you, if it's too loud. Mm. It's very difficult on its Mac to stream because you really are very limited in how you can control the volume of the music. This is maybe slightly better. I don't think I can turn it down without just turning it off. And that is a problem. All right, we'll try this. The music is too loud, make it hard to hear you. Okay, I got it. Maybe you didn't send that on Twitter. Maybe you sent it to me on the live stream. As you can tell, I'm a little confused today. It is Friday. This is better. Okay, thank you. Just keep telling me because to me, it's always too loud, but I gotta have something because we have noise in the background. There are fans from the computer and sirens from outside because we live in the big city, as you know. So I gotta have something to try to cover the dead space. And since there's a chat delay, so you type in chat and it pops up on my iPhone over here and I think, oh, Doris said anyway, has a tweet, but she's not, it's right here. It's exactly what she said, here in chat. Good, love the feedback. So Happy Cow are not happy with their Happy Cow logo. And they're having a contest. And this is the Happy Cow contest. Logo design. Happy Cow. Vote for our new logo until the 8th of December. Okay. The first thing I say is, I mean, look, their old logo is in the vote. Their old logo is the O in vote, which tells me that they like the logo that they have. But okay, they want to change things. We invite you to choose one design in the direction that you feel best represents Happy Cow as we strive to vastly modernize our brand and build a better social media. The designs below will most likely be adapted to ensure maximum applicability to the Happy Cow spirit. More important objectives to judge a criteria can be found in the wording form. You may also vote to keep our current logo. This is design A, happy cow. Where all the happy cow is purple. The happy cow cow is a talk bubble and a purple eye, but I don't know if that's supposed to represent something. Option one. Option two, happy cow. Where the cow again is purple, the words, and the happy cow is what looks to me like the Holiday Inn logo. An H. I, does that say cow to you in the image? It doesn't to me. This is happy cow. Happy on top in green. Cow in purple. And then a new cow on the left eating grass. I find this a little tight and a little too clustered. And it won't read well. Online. Or in print. So those are the three concept designs for replacing the Happy Cow logo. I'm not sure why they're doing this. Maybe they just want attention. And I realized with the music, I don't know if I put it on continuous play. Okay, we're on continuous play now. So those are your choices for Happy Cow. 
I'm not sure why they're doing this. I don't think it, maybe it's just a publicity ploy because I think they're gonna keep their current logo because it's just fine and very cute. How can you be, how can you beat that as a logo? A happy cow with a smiling, beautiful purple cow. But what do I know? All I know is it's a Friday. Now we're gonna get into a little interesting controversy, but is it a controversy or is it just a play for attention? I think it's a play for attention. The World Championship is going on right now in Dubai between Jan Nipramachi and current world champ Magnus Carlsen. I think they've played five games so far and they've drawn each one of them, so it's, it's rather boring. But every day they have a press conference where they get together socially distanced Meh. and they take questions from the audience <sighs> I wasn't going to talk about this because I've been thinking about it for two days but I thought well you know it is kind of interesting and people might say well who are you what do you know you're not a chess player you don't have a feed a ranking well I do play not Bobby Fisher chess right here and I do sometimes. Yes, thank you. I work hard to play chess. It's been a long haul, but we're getting there together. And I often fail, but I do try. Well, the Botez sisters are on Twitch and on YouTube, and they're everywhere. There is the older sister, who is the one who went to Stanford and is the good chess player, then there is the younger sister, who some say is prettier than her older sister, I'm not making a value judgment, who has not gone to school and is in her second year, I believe she said, of a gap year. But together they travel around and play people and they play chess online and they're on a world tour right now. And they're in Dubai and the younger sister asked a question of the world champion Magnus Carlsen. Now, the context that people say is very important is you have to realize that the question that she asks, which I'll tell you, is how does a knight move? Which is a mocking question and an inside joke between the two of them, is something that Magnus said to the Botez sisters when they were live in a training session together online. He was making a joke and it was very funny because how a knight moves is a very basic idea in chess. So I guess she decided she'd be funny and flip it around on him and ask him if he remembered how a knight moves. And this is what it looked like. And th this, the audio is very loud. So you're warned. And the reason it's so loud is because it went, when it originally aired, it was very low. So the people here have cranked up the volume, as the kids say. Hello, Jan and Magnus. Um, great game today, another draw. Who would have guessed? My name is Andrea, reporting from Botez Live. Magnus, I bet you're really tired of getting a lot of really complicated chess questions, but I've been dying to ask you, how does the knight move? Um, that's, uh, that's a good, uh, good question. Uh, it generally moves... Um, like an L, and sometimes uh, in blitz games it can be very unpredictable. Thank you, Magnus. Only you could answer my question. Okay, dumb. Now, Magnus's uh, a good opponent. Question. That's Magnus on the right. Oh, I have to play it again. I did put the browser up for you, so we're gonna play the whole thing over again. It's only 30 seconds. But Jan Napanamachi is on the left. Hello, Jan and Magnus. Um, great game today, another draw. Who would have guessed? My name is Andrea, reporting from Botez Live. Magnus, I bet you're really tired of getting a lot of really complicated chess questions, but I've been dying to ask you, how does the knight move? Um, that's, uh, that's a good, uh, good question. Uh, it generally moves um, like an L, and sometimes uh, in blitz games it can be very unpredictable. Thank you, Magnus. Only you could answer my question. Okay, so, again. So, uh, that's a good... That's Jan there on the left, sitting there, like, what, what am I doing here? What are they talking about? 
And in a way, they're making fun. Botez is making fun of Jan on an international stage for the World Chess Championship. Now, some people think, oh, that's great, and they're usually younger. Oh, that's just great. She's in there mixing things up. She's causing trouble. She's, she's a a asking funny questions. But the thing is, it's an inside joke that nobody gets except Magnus and her. And if you have to explain a joke later by saying, well, there's context because we were online and Magnus has said that to us. And we said, so we decided we'd go and, and, and crash into the World Championship and, and ask him back that question. When you have to explain it that way, he goes around and around and around. The logic is just ridiculous. So who is Andrea Botez, the younger Botez sister? Well, here she is. This is her Instagram. Okay, this is the first que uh, first image you see of her. Not a lot of chess going on in that image. Very attractive. A lot of young people are really just crazy about her, male and female. One young man online commented, Andrea Botez lives in my brain, which doesn't sound like a healthy thing to me. But if this is how you present yourself online, perhaps some might say as an unserious person, just posing for a camera, wearing scanty clothes, not a lot of chess going on that we can see. There's a little video, I don't wanna play a video. This is her sister, who is older, some might say more mature, very well educated. They are both, I believe, from Canada. And together, they're a lot of fun. They have a lot of fun together, there's no doubt about that. But sometimes you have to wonder about the intention and the purpose of someone who steps forward and says on a world stage, I want your attention. I want you to look at me. I want you to judge me. Am I funny? Do I deserve the attention or not? And sometimes you're gonna get support and sometimes you might just get a little bit of blowback. as your thoughts and wonderings are presented to the world. So if you've been following that, that's what's going on in the chess world, is this controversy of what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. So I come down on the side of, eh, if you want to have a private joke with Magnus, do it privately. Do it on your show. Don't do it on the rest of the world and force your ridiculous humor on the rest of us. But what do I know? But there are several GMs who kind of feel that way, that, look, you can be funny, but not on the world stage. Don't crash the party and leave out Jan Nepramachi, who's just sitting there saying, who, who is she and what's she talking about? And now it's that time of day where we're going to take a very brief break run a few ads, and be back in a moment.
back with David Bowles Live. Nice to be with you on a Friday. We are online at Bowles.tv. Subscribe if you're interested in supporting this stream. When you subscribe, you get ad-free watching, and you can call up and re-watch anything that we publish over the last 60 days and watch it for free. No advertising. And if you're just following and not subscribing, that's fine too, but there will be advertising. And I don't believe you can watch our video on demand. On demand. But you can still watch. And the live stream, 9 a.m. Eastern, weekdays, is always free to watch when it's running live. But there will be ads if you are not subscribed. So now we're moving into sort of a serious topic that is slightly dismaying and it is concerning this rise of authoritarianism in America and it's been going on for the past 50 years and it's always been a part of the world at large and let me see if I can change my music to something that's just a little bit quieter than this because it's just a little bit too loud Let's try ambient atmosphere and see what we think of this one. The piano's just a little bit too loud. Well, this is a little weird. We'll try it though. If it doesn't work, let me know in chat. We'll find something else. But once I get going on this, it's going to be hard to stop because I have to concentrate. Because it is Friday, you know. So here we go with this idea of authoritarianism. And one person that I find very interesting who has dealt with authoritarianism for most of his life, and he is dead now, is Václav Havel. He was a playwright on the rise in Czechoslovakia, the Czech Republic, became their president. Some people liked him, some people didn't like him, but he always tried to speak truth to power. And it got him in a lot of trouble. And in his famous essay that was written in 2011, Power of the Powerless, this is what he wrote. When I speak of living within the truth, I naturally do not have in mind only products of conceptual thought, such as a protest or a letter written by a group of intellectuals. It can be any means by which a person or a group revolts against manipulation 
Anything from a letter by intellectuals to a worker's strike, from a rock concert to a student demonstration, from refusing to vote in the farcical elections to making an open speech at some official Congress or even a hunger strike, for instance. If the suppression of the aims of life is a complex process, and if it is based on the multifaceted manipulation of all expressions of life, then, by the same token, every free expression of life indirectly threatens the post-totalitarian system politically, including forms of expression to which, in other social systems, no one would attribute to any potential political significance not to mention explosive power. Now that's a lot to think about. That's a lot to take on. So let's have a little bit of analysis from someone who reviewed a book about Voskhov Havel. And this was their analysis. Havel is a writer and activist and president of a country, never strayed from a central faith that human consciousness is inherent to the individual. He believed that the essential self is vulnerable to the influence of authoritarianism and crass consumerism, but that it is also the key to liberty. In his most widely read essay, which we just read part of, The Power of the Powerless, Vaskolov Havel argues that each individual has the ability to resist and ultimately topple authoritarianism by withholding what he calls ritual approval from an ideological regime. As Zantovsky summarizes it, the human capacity to live in truth, to reaffirm man's authentic identity, is the nuclear weapon that gives power to the powerless. So what is ritual approval? Well, Havel is talking about not going along with what the authoritarians want. You can quietly protest. You can actively protest. You can not participate. In places like China, you see masses of people lined up. North Korea lined up in the public square, cheering, bowing, waving, all on cue. That is ritual approval. You might not believe it. You might not support it inside of your mind, but publicly the body that is in movement and in space is there supporting the authoritarian regime. And we are seeing echoes and traces of that sort of human violence right here in America, where you better be on the right side or we're going to go after you and we're going to leave voicemail for you, and we're going to threaten your life. Now, you can't threaten me back because I'll go to the police and complain, and I'll get you arrested. But I can threaten you because that's my right. That's the thinking. That's where we are right now. And then I remembered, 2018, I did a little podcast about Vaskolov Havel, Velvet Revolution Playwright President. I'll play you 30 seconds of this so I can entice you to go listen to the whole thing on humanmeme.com. Welcome. This is David Bowles, Human Meme. Today's topic, Vaskolov Havel, Velvet Revolution Playwright President. The goal of every playwright is to change the world to bring morality back to the center core of us, and to, with finality, preserve the truth and bring light to the facts of the human condition. There are few playwrights in history who have made such a substantial mark on lives well beyond the current capacity of living and engagement. And that's how it begins. And it goes on, a little longer than that, for my defense and support of a playwright. Oh, now the music's very loud. For a playwright who has the power of making change in the world. 
And some say if you want to be change, be the change you want to see. Well, some people are not able to do that. And that's why they need help. And that's why people like Vaskloff Havel stand up and take a stand and say, you can follow me. I'm changing the music. This is very loud. Oh, we'll see if this is any better. So now we move to artist Ah Wei Wei. Now he's very interesting. He is a dissident and he fights back. I shared his bleak outlook of the United States recently while promoting his memoir in a new interview on PBS's Firing Line. He pointed out that authoritarians cannot be by themselves and instead must rely on a system, a political system, that supports their views. In his book, I described Mao Zedong's directives during the Cultural Revolution in China, which were distributed at night. He compared them to former President Donald Trump's midnight tweets. I disagreed, however, when asked if he thought Trump was authoritarian. He stated that the U.S. is already behaving like an authoritarian state, and much of it has to do with efforts for people to be unified in a certain political correctness. And you see that happening in the GOP. You better be on our side. You better follow Trump. If you're not a Trumper, you're not part of the GOP. In many ways, you're already in the authoritarian state. You just don't know it. I told Firing Line host Margaret Hooper. Hoover, who asked him to elaborate. I explained that with today's technology, we know so much more than we actually understand. The information has become jammed, but we don't really have the knowledge because you don't work. You don't have to act on anything. You just think you're purified by certain ideas that you agree with. That is posing dangers to society, to an extremely divided society. And isn't that the truth? We have two sides. We'll say the right and the left. And all they think they have to do is talk and threaten without putting any action behind it. And I'm not talking about shooting people or hurting people, but if you believe something, you should be out there trying to make change in the world. And the left loves to parade and loves to protest. And the right loves to stand around and mock and make fun of those protests. Except at night when they're carrying tiki torches. Then they don't want to be mocked. And if you mock them, they get very upset. Now continuing our chess theme and the geniuses who are in that world, we turn to Garry Kasparov, former world champion. And he's been very political. He's a Russian who came up the wrong way. He was the wrong kind of Russian. Karpov was the world champion, and Gary tried to beat him, but he was not a purebred Russian, we might say. Had some wrong countries, wrong kind of religion to be fully accepted by the system. And the system fought it, fought him, and he fought the system back. And today he writes and supports information and freedom and forward thinking. I think of Donald Trump's ascent and the KGB operations to help him get elected. I saw the Russian propaganda machine fully supporting Trump and using the newly built troll factories and fake news industry to help Trump get elected. And whatever Trump's relations with the KGB were in the past, I believe there were, it was clear that Putin thought that was a time to go for this final blow to divide America, to create in American democracy a friction 
it could not heal. Trump was an agent, an ideal agent of chaos. It's like an icebreaker destroying the American political system. I don't think Putin expected Trump to win, but I think he thought that Trump could do what he is doing now, sowing division. And I remember early in Trump's campaign, I would have conversations with people online and they would make wild accusations. And I would ask, where are you getting this information from? And they would send me stuff from RT News. And I would go check out the link, and it was, yeah, everything that they said is what was said in RT News. And I said to these people who were posting this, do you know what RT News is? It's Russian television. It's RT, Russian television. It's Russian propaganda in English on the American Internet. And you're being duped by them. They're selling you a story that you're buying and propagating and making part of your own world belief. And you're spreading that information on my site and other sites and claiming that it's right and real. And you can certainly do that. But are you aware that you are a puppet of Russian television? And of course, when you have a conversation like that, people don't reply to you. They just disappear. But you still have the conversation because it's important for other people who are reading and watching and not saying anything. Because that happens a lot. And you can see in page views, you can see there are people reading what you're writing even if they're not responding. And even if the people you are responding to disappear. Or call you names and then disappear. Which is usually what happens. Or they say, next time I see you, I'll bring a gun. That's usually how these conversations end. They don't end intellectually. They don't end, well, let's agree to disagree. They end with a threat. A threat that they make against you, and it usually involves a gun. So this idea of being woke is the new cudgel that the right is using against the left. Being woke is politically incorrect. It means that you're doing and saying things you don't believe in just because you don't want to get in trouble and be outside the circle of approval. Well, John McWhorter wrote an interesting piece about the meaning and the history of being woke that you can read. And here's a quote from his article. The first thing that happened at woke was that it was borrowed from black slang. John McWhorter is a black writer. Not that it matters, but this is where he's coming from. It first appeared in neither a BuzzFeed article nor a rap, but a jolly piece on black vernacular expressions in 1962 in a newspaper called If You're Woke, You Dig It. Many will be surprised that salty as an irritable, another black expression that white people have taken on of late, also occurs in that particular piece. By the time something hits the page, we can be sure it's been around a long time, and it's a good guess that black people have been using woke for at least a couple of decades before their people are using it now. Lead Belly, it's a blues performer, gives us a look at its likely origins when he urges people to stay woke in an afterpiece remark on a 1938 recording. He is referring to black people being alert to actual physical danger. It would have been a natural evolution to start using stay woke to refer more to, as we say, systemic matters. It was after 2010 that woke jumped the fence into mainstream parlance. Erica Badu's master teacher seems to have at least planted a seed and then those stay woke salutes on Twitter in 2012 were in the wake of the Trayvon Martin killing, upon which the expression was truly set in stone. So that's the history and meaning behind a word that has deep ramifications. It's a warning, not a political way of thinking at all. It's watch your back in the context of 
You're a minority? You're black? People are after you? Watch your back, stay awake. Pay attention. Be woke. That's where it comes from. That's not what it means now today because it's been twisted. And now we take the next step in this cudgeling of American democracy by the hard right and dictators and authoritarians the world over. Authoritarians want authoritarianism here in America. They don't want democracy or free speech or free elections. They want to lock us down as we are trying to unlock their countries. And it's dangerous. So Cody Kane has a very interesting argument on how things work. Oh, what's Dora saying? I don't know if we'll be able to go back to the United Nation or at least for one where diverse views are listened to without being disparaged. Facebook or Mega is Meta, I think, is not any I do need to know what my friends or neighbors politically think. Do I need to know what my friends or neighbors politically think? That's a good point. And that's where we are, where, where, where people think they know what they're talking about. And I don't say I do, but I try to research and find out things from both sides to try to form the illusion of something that makes sense in the world without just being negative and awful and trying to tear apart your community or your neighborhood. So this Cody Kane writes very presciently about how these dictators work. They start by saying, I'm of the people. And you can relate this directly to Donald Trump. I'm of the people. I understand you're on your phone, Dora. Thank you. I want Medicare for all. I want everybody to have money. I want infrastructure. All these great things to get the popular vote, the socialist vote. The vote of the middle, the vote of the trembling liberals. And then once they get in power, it all changes. I don't want any of that. I want you to be quiet while I do my thing. So why do so many dictators claimed? Oh, restarting. That's good. Yes, restart. I don't think we're, we're, we're frozen. I think we're still live. Yes, we're live. So why have so many dictators claimed to lead left-wing socialist governments? Very interesting. For a very good reason. Think about the situation from the perspective of a right-wing wannabe tyrant who desires to seize control of government. What campaign message should the wannabe tyrant communicate to the population? Should the tyrant tell the population, I am a devious person. I want to be a dictator who controls everything myself. I want to suppress all the working people, corrupt the government, and steal loads of money by abusing my power. Well, of course not. Tyrants who desire to become dictators cannot possibly tell you the truth. In order to seize power and remain in control, tyrants must lie to the people misrepresenting themselves as someone they are not. Clearly, tyrants should pretend to be someone who can offer what the people desire. Many tyrants falsely proclaim to be Marxists, believe it or not, socialists and left-wingers left because the ideas of the left are broadly popular among the oppressed classes in many countries around the world. And for good reason. Left-wing policies would indeed improve the quality of their life in most situations, in most societies. Once in office, however, the tyrants do not truly implement left-wing policies, but instead rely on totalitarian right-wing policies, such as consolidating their own power, restricting democracy, aligning with the wealthy, and imprisoning political dissidents, and so on all while falsely proclaiming to represent the left. Interesting, fascinating disconnection. 
So, Cody continues, now updating his argument from general authoritarianism to the specific. Trump's presidential campaign in 2016 was significantly focused on appealing to the blue-collar working class by promising to implement a number of popular left-wing policies. To be sure, Trump also campaigned on plenty of right-wing appeals, such as opposition to immigration, xenophobic nationalism, overt racism and sexism, gun rights, and so forth. But Trump intentionally sought the support of blue-collar working-class voters by promising left-wing policies. He promised a new health care system with universal coverage for everyone at a mere fraction of the cost. He promised he would stop U.S. corporations from shipping jobs overseas and would bring back jobs to America. He promised he would never cut Social Security, Medicare, or Medicaid. He promised to get tough on Big Pharma and cut the high costs of drug prices. He promised a massive investment in America's infrastructure like roads and bridges. He promised to tax the rich, including himself, and provide a massive tax cut for the middle class. But once Trump was elected, of course, he abandoned all those promises of policies that would benefit the working class and instead implemented right-wing policies that benefited large corporations and the rich at the top, including granting a massive tax cut to himself and the rich, slashing regulations for big business, seeking to repeal the Affordable Care Act and seeking to cut out Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. And this all happened. A promise was made, a promise was not delivered. As all part of a plan. This is exactly the dictator's playbook for deceiving the population. Trump followed it faithfully. His entire presidency was based upon a big lie. And the big lie is not the stolen election that he claims, which was not stolen. The big lie is... He promised a liberal agenda, and once he was elected, he did just the opposite of everything he said he would do. And that's just not Trump. That's throughout history. That's how dictators operate. They get elected by the people, then they get in power, and then they will not go away. They will stay. We see it in Putin. We see it happening in China. And if Donald Trump or someone like him got elected, with all the power they've now consolidated in the states to really rig an election and take it away from the voters, would we ever get rid of them? Or let me phrase that another way. Would they ever not want to be president? And what could we do to stop them? And what could we do to stop them? I'm not leaving. I invalidate the election. I'm president forever. Who would stop them? Not the Democrats. The Democrats are incompetent. Definitely not the GOP. Who would save us? The Supreme Court? Never. The Supreme Court is over. They've lost their authority. They've lost their integration. They've lost their integrity because it's all political, and it always has been. But now it's been revealed, and it's been dedicated and demoralized and demonized. And we're in a stuck place. As long as you have a true liberal promising to take care of the people, we'll be all right. But that doesn't happen very often, especially not in America. And now we close with this frightening news that just happened this morning and seemed like the perfect frosting on our cupcake in this terrible discussion of wokeness and authoritarianism in America. Governor, Rand DeSantis, Governor Ran, Ron DeSantis in Florida wants to be president. You can see the taste on him and in him. He wants to resurrect the Florida State guard 
a World War II parliamentary force that was disbanded in the 1940s. Unlike the Florida National Guard, the Florida State Guard would answer slow, solely to the governor. No federal deployments, no federal missions like the National Guard, no federal dollars. DeSantis wants the civilian volunteer force to include about 200 members. They would assist the National Guard with hurricane, natural disaster, and other state-specific emergencies. Price tag, $3.5 million. We want to be able to have a quick response capability in reestablishing the Florida State Guard. will allow civilians from all over the state to be trained in the best emergency response techniques and have the ability to mobilize very, very quickly, DeSantis said. The upside, DeSantis added, they're not encumbered by the federal government. So you talk about dictators who want to be kings and run their own little despot nations. Florida, Ron DeSantis wants his own private guard his own private Praetorian Guard that answers only to him as the governor, that he can use as he wishes to enforce whatever policy he wants. And this is a man who wants to lead the United States of America? Doesn't seem very democratic to me. I think it raises a lot of alarm bells. And we need to be aware of it, and we need to spread the word, and we need to talk about these things. Whatever side you're on, we need to know who these people are and what they want to do to us. And we need to find out who's kept their word and who has broken their word, because it matters. And now, my friend, it's time to take another blood pressure break. Coming up soon is Jan Marie. She's going to give us a lot of holiday fun, teaching you some wonderful, different holiday signs based on classifiers and even if you don't know anything about ASL or sign language or deaf culture you're going to learn with Jana Marie if you're advanced, a student of the language or an absolute newbie, you're going to have fun she's coming up very soon I'll see you in a moment
And we're back for break. Thank you for the follow. Now, Roku 99. This is Bulls.TV. We are live on a Friday, wrapping up our week. So just to put a final uh, button, as they say, on the conversation about American authoritarianism and its rise, not its fall, it's still rising, and DeSantis in Florida. We know that he wants to be president, and we know that he has authoritarian views, and he's run Florida in a very strange, autocratic way. And there are other GOPers like him, Tom Cotton, Josh Hawley in Missouri, and we all know they want to finish what Trump started but could not finish. They want to reform an America into an authoritarian state. And if you listen to what they say and if you believe them, that is their plan. And it's dangerous for the middle of America. It's dangerous for the rest of us who don't want to live under authoritarian rule. We want to have free speech. We want to come and go as we please. And we don't want to answer to a dictator or a leader. We want to have our own points of view and our own feelings, our own way of life. But the danger of what Trump did is he showed these other guys who are much smarter, much more clever, much more copious. Trump showed them how to do it. He gave them the willpower and the means and the strategy for taking the next step. And DeSantis wanting his own private little army. They cost $3.5 million and he's not paying for it. Florida's paying for it. Or he's using federal money to pay for it. I don't know, but he's not paying for it himself. But he wants this own private little coterie of soldiers that he controls and powers. Well, imagine that kind of guy in a presidency with his own little police force that's not the Secret Service, but something else that he has created. Well, we've had just about enough of that. And now we're going to have some fun and bring up Jana Marie, who is going to give us a wonderful lesson in holiday signs with holiday classifiers. It's going to be a wonderful time. And I'm getting this all set up. You can hear her walking around in the background. I'm going to get this set up for her now. I'm going to put up her introduction. And the next beautiful face you see will not be mine, but the great Jana Marie.
We are back from break. Thank you, Jana Marie, for the wonderful holiday classifiers. That was part one. Next week, part two, more holiday classifiers, including some interesting things for Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and other celebrations of the same sort of idea around the world. That will be next week, part two of Christmas classifiers with the lovely Jana Marie. I might, need, I, 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 I might need to write that myself down. Christmas classifiers. That's what I should have called this from the beginning. Well, it's Friday. And you know what that means. Well, my friend, it means it's time we need to have just a little bit of fun. And we need to let the crowd back in the room. Because... It's time for Not Bobby Fisher Chess with your friend and mine, Mr. David Bowles. And they're not booing. They're saying, Dave, Dave. Now, this is hurting my feelings a little bit. And the fact that I'm doing it to myself makes it even worse. But these are the ways of the world, you know. It's been an interesting conundrum trying to figure out how to win at these terrible games of chess that I'm not very good at. But we do it anyway because it's very important for us to try to set the pace and... <laughs> well, I'm not trying to be funny, but I understand what you're not. It's a rough crowd today for not Bobby Fisher chess. But that's okay. That's why we're here. And if you don't like chess, it's okay. You can stick around. We're still having fun. Because chess is not just about the game. Chess is about life and getting along and strategy and trying to figure out where you're going and where you've been. And I'm still trying to figure it all out. So our next puzzle on Chessable, which is our hardest place to play. No! Exactly. I feel the same way. It is a puzzle that takes four moves. Now, usually Chessable makes you make moves in twos. But this one's a four. I put that on there. That's my ding. Not my dong, not my ding dong, just my ding. And I'm wasting time. Okay, white to play. I gotta figure out four moves. What's the first move? White to play, white to play, white to play. Yeah. Well, I like moving the rook. And I'm running out of time. But if I move my rook from here to here, I put the king in check. And all's going to be lost with the world. And I'm running out of time. So I might as well give it a go. Hiya! Not the right answer. Oh my gosh. I know. You're laughing. You're mocking me just a little bit. But it's alright. They didn't want that check. They wanted a simpler check. Just go straight down. Boom. I don't think my check was that bad. Because it was the same result. So they're going to make me make this move, so I have to move it now. Boom. Okay, then the king moves. Now see, if I had... Uh, when I put the rook here, the king can't move there. I don't... Exactly. That's my feeling. That's the disgust sound. So, I don't know. I guess I'll just go back here and put the king back in check? What's the point of it all? Well, that was a yellow move, which means it's okay, but it's not the preferred move. Which bothers me quite a lot, too. No! I feel the same way. Believe me, friend. It's not just... So now what do you do? Where do you move? I, I, thought, I move here. I put the king right in check. It won't let me do it. So there must be a better way. Well, I can't go here. The king will take. I can't go all the way over and put the king in check again because the king will take. So I don't know what they want from me. Maybe a king move, put the king here. Three squares away. I don't know. I'll try it. I'm running out of time. 
no. Oh, it's a pawn move. Oh boy, this is not going well. It is a fight. I'll make the move. Well, while they're fighting, I'm trying to win the game. And I did, sort of. Oh, that was just disastrous. I feel the same way. Not a celebration. More like a humiliation. And it's Friday. Well... Let's see what chess.com has for us. I believe this is the puzzle of the day. Let me re refresh the page to see what's going on. Okay, so this is chess puzzles. I used to be able to make this much bigger. I don't know what they did that I can't expand it. You see the little arrows there in the bottom right corner? I should be able to pull that out and make it bigger, but I can't. But at least I'm not under any kind of time pressure trying to figure this one out. This is my joy sound. Does it make me happy? Yes! Okay, thank you. That's the support I needed on the first puzzle. I didn't need the fighting and the yelling and the no. So black to move, black to move. Black is moving. But where is black moving? Well, hmm. Now it's later in the week and these puzzles are supposed to get exponentially worse as the week wears on. And I do believe that is what's happening. And I am just a little bit disgusted. The timer is ticking. It's not a time bomb, but the viewers are not happy because I can't make up my mind. Black to move, black to move. So there's my king is here. Where's my king? There's my king. Okay, there's my king. And there's the king I'm going after. So. Hmm. I really like this knight move. And it puts the king in check. But then this rook will just take. I don't get anything out of it. I'm sort of tempted to move here, this, move this rook here, and try to take that rook. But these puzzles tend not to like those kind of moves, those indirect setting up moves. They really like you to close your eyes and take a shot at the king. None of this is making me very happy. The pawn can't move. Well, I'm going to make a night move just to see what happens. Let's see what happens. Oh, it was the right move. Okay, well, I get some kind of... Thank you very much. I was ready for a boo, but I'll take the applause. But now the question becomes me, now what are you going to do? Where? I'm very tempted to just play this out and let this rook, yeah, go up here, bang. And sit there. The king can't take. Because my pawn's right there. But this rook could take. But my pawn's right there. Hmm. These are interesting conundrums that I think I like. I'm tempted to make the move. I'm tempted. I don't know what other moves I have. Because everything else has really remained the same. No. No. Not the right move. 
Anyway, I can't go all the way and take the knight because then I'll just, that doesn't make sense, does it? Let's see what happens, just because I'm running out of patience. Oh! oh. I agree. I was too timid. I, I agree with your assessment. I know. It's Friday. Well, 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 Davy, well, 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 as Uncle Mills used to say. I'm very tempted to go here, put the king in check, bang. And then what? King moves, or the rook goes in the place, and then I take it. Okay, I'll try that. I think that looks good. Hello? No. Oh, so painful. Where's my booing? Thank you. I agree. I have no defense. So maybe it's this rook to here. Yeah, I agree. It goes right there and hits the king that way. That would be interesting. They always like to put the king in check. Oh my. What do we have to lose? It's Friday. Oh, I done. Well, that was painful. I got it done. Yeah! Yes! We're trying to end on a high note. Even though we really didn't play that very well. But that's alright. That's how things go when you're trying to win the world. And now, my bowls.tv friend, it's the end of the week. Is this week number seven? I don't know. I was counting the days and then the weeks, and perhaps if we're lucky enough, we'll count months. And then we'll count years into this great experiment called bowls.tv. We're still trying to figure out things like logos and placements that you can't really see and other little things that you can't really see because of lighting and because of font style, but it's all right. It's all a learning process. We're having fun on Bowls.tv weekdays, 9 a.m. Eastern. And you can find us online on Twitter at David Bowles, on Facebook, forward slash Bowles, Instagram, Bowles Books, or you can pop in right here in our live chat. Say hello, start a conversation, have a wonderful time together. And we talked about some chess today. We talked about authoritarianism in the world and the rising American authoritarianism that is right there, not even threatening us. It's in our face. It's challenging us with gunshots and slaps to the elbow. It's our decision how we fight back, if we choose to fight back or if we just give in to go along. And we'll see how that turns out for us. But it's been a wonderful stream. I thank you so much for joining us. And we will see you again bright and early Monday morning, 9 a.m. Sometime, some weekend, we might just pop in and do a little test or have a little sign language lesson or just do a whole thing on chess. Maybe one day we will and you'll be invited. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Let me know what you're thinking. Find me online. You know where.